Good morning. I'm Brad County Commissioner Stacy Ritter. We're at the Tamarack Cafe and Diner this morning at the corner of Knob Hill and McNabb in the city of Tamarack. We're here once a month. This is uh, Monday the... What is today? 17th? 18th? 18th of April. We're back in a month. Um, the phone number here is 954-720-9655 and they're open at breakfast, lunch, and dinner for your dining pleasure. My, um, my guest today is Andrew Posada, <coughs> excuse me, who's the Director of Broward County Elderly and Veteran Services Div Division. Hi. Hello. Good morning. <laughs> Thanks for being here. We're going to talk today about Broward County's elderly and veteran services. And I was talking to Andrea off camera, and I was telling her that I don't think most people in Broward County have any idea the length and breadth of the services that we provide our elderly and veterans. So today we're just going to chat about <coughs> what Broward County does for its elderly and veteran population. Thank you for having me because this definitely gives me an opportunity for people to learn about what we do and what services are available to them and how they can get help. First so. of all, tell everybody where you came from. You weren't always in this division. No, I've uh, been uh, with this division since September, September, and prior to that, I was with Broward County Transit for 10 years. And I a really easy gig. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I worked my entire 10 years there with the paratransit service. So I have a, a lot of experience. Uh, working with and, and trying to help the elderly and disabled of our community and, and, and I, I love that I was able to have this opportunity to help people on an even larger scale. Okay, so, so you're new to this but you're not new to Broward. That's right. And so tell tell us, first of all, how do other counties do what Broward County does with this? Do you know? I mean, it seems when I go to Florida Association of Counties meetings, for example, we do so much more than any other county does. Mm -hmm. I think that we do do we do do a lot more, uh, particularly with our veteran services and also with the services we provide to the, to the elderly. Uh, we're one of the few counties where this service is provided by a county agency, and other counties in the state is provided by nonprofit organizations, and some it's even provided by for-profit organizations. Wow. So uh, we get funding from the state of Florida. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's a competitive bid process where we apply for the grant every three years and are awarded the grant through the county's Aging and Disability Resource Center. Now, do we have to do matching funds with these grants? Yes, we do. Always or sometimes? Always. Or? Always. 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 So what, how much money do we get from the state? We get approximately uh, $10 million from the state total from the Department of Elder Affairs and the Department of Children and Families, DCF, mm -hmm. and then the county chips in an additional $2.5 million to further supplement the services, to provide match, and then they even fund and above and beyond the match wow. to help with these services. So, do we get any federal money? No, we don't. Okay, we no get that, but we do in transit. Yes, well, with transit which they helps, do. Yes. Which sort of meshes in with the same population. Absolutely. A lot of, you, you service a lot of the same people that use transit. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. so we're looking at how much money, what's your budget? It's a little over $13 million a okay. year. And how many people do you estimate we service? Uh, right now, it's a, it's at least it's a little under four thousand people on a regular basis. The veteran services speak to on average seven hundred people a month, and they last year helped thirteen hundred people file actual claims with the VA for benefits. And last week at the county commission meeting, Andrea it was no, it was a week before last. Week I think it was Andrea and her staff did an amazing presentation on. On the, on the veteran services, but individual cases that you help for people who are being crushed by um, requests, I guess directives by the federal government to pay back some of their benefits. Yes. And, we, and you help those people. Absolutely. Our veteran services officers, they don't just speak to people on the phone. They actually go to their homes or if the, if the individual is like, they come to their office and they sit with them and actually help them fill out all of that paperwork. And, you know, federal government paperwork is just mind-boggling for anyone. And they, they have to su provide supporting documentation, like copies of their military records, bank accounts, all that sort of thing. And that's an overwhelming task for anyone. Right. So we provide that service free of charge and help them apply for those benefits. And your staff are all veterans, too. Absolutely. That's a requirement, actually, of the position. Oh, really? Yes. And that helps because they know all about that red tape. Yes. I mean, you helped a man, I think, what, 100 years 100 old? 100 years old, yes. <laughs> and he had was being denied benefits? Well, he had right? never he'd never applied for benefits, oh. actually. He didn't even realize that those that was available to him. And the, the, because he w was requiring 24-hour health care, his costs had gone through the roof. And so his niece contacted us. And one of our veteran services officers and the niece filled out all the paperwork. She helped gather up all the supporting documentation. He got an $18,000 retroactive payment and then monthly benefits. And he is still thriving in his home. 
which would not have been the case, I suspect, if he had to go to a nursing home. And that's a story you will never read about in the paper. Absolutely. About Probably something not, no. good that, you know, that Brad County does. So, so there, are, there has to be, though, a great many people out there that don't, that are eligible for services, either elderly or veterans, and mm-hmm. don't know about them. Absolutely. So let's sure. talk about some of those. Let's um, talk about some of the services. Uh, the one service that we offer, the, the, our largest uh, group of case managers, we have about uh, 60 or 70 case managers who work in what's called the Community Care for the Elderly Program. That's the funding that we receive from the Aging and Disability Resource Center. Uh, they receive the money from the Department of Elder Affairs, and then we are awarded, have been awarded that grant to provide that service. And it's actually uh, case management. We go to the people's homes, assess their needs, and then we help them get the get the services that they need and pay for those services, like in-home care, housekeeping, uh, grocery shopping, all those sorts of services that people... Need, need assistance with to help them stay in their homes. How do they, how, how is it that you are able to tell the population here about the service? It seems like it's one of the best kept secrets in Brown County. <laughs> and how do you get that? I mean, it's not, clearly we're trying to do that today, but how in the past, there's a great pamphlet here, which we're going to start passing out to the constituency out here in Northwest Broward. But how do you get the, how do you get it out there? We do a lot of public outreach. We try to attend all of the senior fairs that are, that occur in the county, um, whether it be at, in neighborhood uh, senior centers or the daycare centers. Anova University has, has events all the time. So anytime any, there's any event, we seek those out. We try to find out where they are and invite ourselves. <laughs> and then we also, of course, welcome invitations from anyone and, and anyone who wants us to come speak to any group anywhere. We're happy to do that. Okay, let's go back to the services for a minute okay. because um, you, I don't, I don't really, I don't want to gloss over them because you talked yes. about personal care, talked about homemaking, grocery shopping. How, how do, let's say uh, uh, somebody calls mm-hmm. the Broward County Elderly and Veterans Services and says I need help. What's the first thing that happens? Um, th- the first thing that happens is is we contact, we work with the Aging and Disability Resource Center, the ADRC, and they have a slew of programs that we're not even associated with. Besides the programs that we offer, they have numerous programs as well. So they will speak to the individual on the phone and decide which program best suits their needs. Okay. And if they decide that that's one of our programs, they then refer them back to us. A case manager is assigned, goes to the home and assesses their needs. And, and we take it from there and we have it, we even have, as it says here in the pamphlet, yeah. uh, we help fund the emergency alert response pendants for people mm-hmm. to wear. We'll help pay for those. Um, we will pay for adult daycare. We also, another big service that we provide is a lot of people do have caregivers. They live with family members or someone who helps them, but those people need help. Those people need a break sometimes. They need respite, so we help provide respite services for those people. Um, now, where do you find the people? Oh, okay, we're going to, I'm going. I'm getting the high sign. We're going to take a break. Um, and then we're going to come back and we're going to talk some more with Andrew Posada from the Elderly and, is it elderly? Elderly. Yeah, elderly and Veterans Services Division of Broward County. We'll be right back.